The Harry Potter books are becoming TV shows, and I have questions. Like, why? Oh, for money, obviously. Right, you gotta milk for cash cow. <laughs> So they're gonna make a season of the show from each book of the series, and I recently made a video ranking how good I think each season will be based on how well the books lend themselves to a TV show. And my main concern was that they don't really lend themselves to a TV show, at least not the first three. These are shorter books than the later ones from The Goblet of Fire onwards, and they're written for a much younger audience. So how are they gonna take something this short which was very successfully made into a film that was less than three hours long, and stretch it into eight to ten hours of TV. Well, let's explore their options, and if they're good options. And then at the end, I'll tell you what I'd do to do my best to make this into a successful TV show. Please keep in mind this is just from a fan, I have never written a TV show in my life. So some of the comments on my video where I ranked how these books lend themselves to a TV show suggested they could combine book one and book two into a single season. Now, if you mean combining the plot into a single year at Hogwarts, so the Philosopher's Stone is being stolen at the same time as the chamber is being opened and Lockhart and Quirrell are like job sharing or something, I think that's just too much. But if you mean having the first half of the season be about the Philosopher's Stone and then the second half of the season be about the Chamber of Secrets, it could work, but I don't like it. I think these books are too similar in terms of structure and format for it not to feel too repetitive. Like if episode one and episode six from the season were about Harry being miserable at the Dursleys, and episode five and episode 10 were Harry alone in either the room where he fights Quirrell or the chamber fighting the Basilisk, only to end the episode with a big explanation from Dumbledore about exactly what happened. Two Christmas episodes, two Halloween episodes, all in the same season. It just, it feels like too much of the same. Plus, I'm sorry, but if the whole selling point of this TV show is we're using TV to give us more time to tell a truer version of the story from the books, but then they combine two books because they didn't need a whole TV season, to tell the whole story. The question remains why they felt the need to expand on what we got in the movies. Like, either you need a whole season to do a good job of telling this story, or the movie was fine. So, combining the two books, not for me. A suggestion on my last video was that they could flesh out the current story by adding in plot lines, for example, showing us what Luna was doing in her earlier years before we meet her in the Order of the Phoenix. Give us a full scene at the start of the Philosopher's Stone, showing us Voldemort killing the Potters. Give us Ginny's perspective of being possessed in the Chamber of Secrets. Show us flashbacks of Quirrell in Albania when he's initially confronted by Voldemort. Or show us his break into Gringotts. Now these do sound like interesting scenes, and it would definitely be a captivating way to stretch out the source material in these earlier seasons, but I've got two main issues. The first one being showing Quirrell breaking into Gringotts or Ginny going through her ordeal being possessed completely changes the core mystery that hold the first two books together. These stories are mysteries at their core. They are whodunits. Who is trying to steal the stone? Who opened the Chamber of Secrets? And the red herrings and the little clues that are dotted through it and the big shock twists at the end they're central to what makes a good mystery. And look, I know many longtime fans already know the endings going into these shows, but they're not gonna be making these shows with a, well, everyone knows what happens at the end anyway, so who cares, kind of mindset. And the second angle of adding in scenes for characters like Luna is that this Wizarding World doesn't have the best track record for adding details later on that weren't in the books. In the movies, adding the burning of the burrow to the Half-Blood Prince, it went terribly. In the Deathly Hallows part two, they made Luna and Neville romantically interested in each other, and I hated it. And don't even get me started on Fantastic Beasts. Making McGonagall a teacher before maybe she was even born, definitely before she started teaching at Hogwarts. Hell, turning Fantastic Beasts into a Dumbledore prequel series, they did not do well. And many fans like to just pretend they didn't exist. And then, don't even get me started on the cursed child, okay? My point is, rebooting with a new cast, a new look Hogwarts, potentially new music, that's already gonna be jarring to fans. So adding in non-canon details is a slippery slope. Some people just think I'm overthinking things. Just make a show from the book and who cares about pacing or engaging well-structured media? So with that approach, 
here's what the series would look like. This book is 223 pages long, okay? So if we assume eight episodes, which I think will be the minimum we'll get, we can assume approximately one episode for less than every 30 pages of the book. Meaning in episode one, we don't even find out that Harry is a wizard yet. Episode two, we haven't even got to Hogwarts, we haven't met Ron or Hermione. Episode three, we just about get to the sorting ceremony. And if you're giving me three hours of TV across three weeks for the reboot of this series, and still no magic has really happened besides Hermione doing Oculus Repairo on the train. By the mid-season finale, we've only just had our first lessons and played our first game of Quidditch. But then the second half of the series flies through Halloween, Christmas, the Norbert stuff, the Forbidden Forest attention, finding out about the third floor corridor, researching Nicholas Flamel and the Philosopher's Stone, being suspicious of Snape through it all, then going to stop him and having the big twist that it's Quirrell. You just see how the pacing doesn't really work. You see how unbalanced it would all be. And I suppose you could take some of that stuff in the second half of the series and bring it forwards. Like it doesn't have to be completely even and paced like the book. But if I had to work with this and turn it into eight episodes of a TV show, this is what I'd do. So if I was in charge of this project, and Warner, I am open to consulting, okay, happy to discuss my availability during pre-production. Here's how the show would look if I were putting it together. Episode one would finish with Hagrid bursting into the cabin in the middle of the sea, revealing to Harry that he's a wizard. It's not a bad cliffhanger. And that episode would contain Vernon going to work the day that Voldemort was defeated 11 years earlier, seeing all these strange people celebrating and him being a bit grumpy about it. And then Dumbledore and McGonagall discussing leaving Harry with the worst muggles imaginable. Hagrid showing up, dropping the baby off, and then the time jump, we see Harry being abused, we take the trip to the zoo, we see him release the snake. There's a lot of owls, a lot of letters, then they run away, they get to the hut, Hagrid is there. Look, I don't love it as a series premiere. Like, I'd love to get glimpses of Hogwarts and some magic in the very first episode and definitely meet the Golden Trio. But unless we assume this is going to have maybe six episodes instead of eight, I can't see it front-loading that much. So we have to flesh it out more, and that's what I think episode one looks like. But at least this episode would have exposition in a sort of show-don't-tell kind of format. It has some conflict, some foreshadowing, and it's a good opportunity to set the tone. Episode 2 then would be Diagon Alley. Hagrid would give Harry more information about his past. We'd have Gringotts, Ollivanders, meeting Malfoy and Madame Malkins, which I'm gutted they left out of the film. We'd meet Hedwig. Harry would have to go back to the Dursleys for a month before going off to Platform 9 and 3 quarters. And I think we could even push through to the journey to Hogwarts. We'd meet Ron and Hermione, finish with our first glimpse of the castle, swelling into this magical musical crescendo that is hopefully as iconic as the music from the film. Now, I struggle with this episode because there's not a lot of conflict. Like, maybe little bits with the Dursleys in that month before he goes off to Hogwarts, but there's not really any high-stakes conflict. It's just really an exposition episode where you dump a bunch of information and some world building in there. Episode three then would start with the sorting ceremony, the first classes, Harry's first run-in with Snape. Harry Potter. Ah... Uh newest celebrity. I would be willing to audition for the role. We'd have Harry flying for the first time, trying to stop Malfoy with Neville's Remember All, then the Midnight running around the castle after hours, trying to get away from Filch, their first glimpse of Fluffy. You could flesh the episode out with like Charms class, showing the castle and the grounds and the brilliance of magic, meet some supporting characters like Dean and Seamus, and get a glimpse into like everyday life at Hogwarts. This episode would have plenty of conflict and resolution, tons of room to develop relationships with the minor characters and have inter-character dynamics established. Like, this is the third episode, so by this point, we really, really want the audience to see this as a living, breathing, wizarding world with so much going on. Episode four is our mid-season episode. Like, I know mid-season finales aren't really a thing with these smaller episodes, but I still think in the middle you need to be strong. So we've got Halloween, we've got Troll in the Dungeon, and then them saving Hermione in the girls' bathroom, plus Harry's first Quidditch match. In the books, they jump pretty quickly from the Quidditch match to Christmas, but I wouldn't want Halloween and Christmas in the same episode, so we'll push that on to episode five. But, like, Quidditch can be a big part of this episode. That can be a big 
high adrenaline part. Obviously, before the match, Harry is very nervous, so we can touch on that whole thing. Plus him realizing that his father was a seeker, that'll be a big moment in this episode. And of course, during the match, we have the whole Hermione setting Snape's robes on fire, and the episode will finish with them quizzing Hagrid and finding out that Nicholas Flamel, whoever that is, has something to do with things. Episode 5 then would be the lead up to Christmas, the decorations around the castle, then Christmas itself with the Weasleys staying at Hogwarts with Harry, the Weasley sweaters, the Christmas dinner in the Great Hall, Harry getting his father's old invisibility cloak, sneaking out to the restricted section and overhearing Snape confronting Quirrell, finding out about Flamel, finding the mirror of Erised. There'd be lots of suspense in this episode. A few mysteries starting to be solved, but more mysteries presenting themselves. Plus it really starts to build the suspicion of Snape. With all that looming, I feel like episode six almost goes off on a tangent because it would all be about Norbert the Norwegian Ridgeback Dragon. Norbert would hatch. There'd be a bit more suspicion of Snape in some of the conversations, but ultimately it would be all about Norbert and then eventually taking him to the tallest tower to drop off to Charlie's friends before they're being caught by McGonagall and sentenced to detention. We'd need a second Quidditch match either in this episode or the following episode, but it wouldn't be as big of a part as the first one was. Which sort of leads us into episode 7, which would be either the Quidditch match or going straight into preparing for detention. And I think a lot of the episode can be this detention in the Forbidden Forest, right? You're gonna have lots of drawn out sequences building tension, a lot of suspense, tracking the unicorn, finding out about the unicorn, the run in with the centaurs, then eventually finding the unicorn's corpse and Voldemort's drinking its blood. The centaurs save Harry, but there's a huge bit of foreshadowing where the centaurs get into a bit of a fight. Bane is like, you should have left him to die because of the whole thing in the final book with Harry dying in the forest, which all makes sense through the series. It's a great moment of foreshadowing and they need to give that a big moment in this show. The episode would finish with the trio deciding to go after Snape because they know Dumbledore's out of the school and that's the night Snape's gonna try and steal the stone. Which brings us to the finale. Episode eight would be going down the trapdoor Fluffy, the Devil's Snare, the Flying Keys, the Potions Riddle, the Chess Match Ron, I'm going to sacrifice myself! And then the final showdown with Quirrell. All of that would end moving into the final sort of 20% of the episode where Dumbledore gives his explanation about what happened through the year, award the last minute house points to Gryffindor so that Slytherin don't win, and then Harry's journey back to King's Cross. Now at King's Cross, they could have a moment in the very final scene, maybe even post credits, where the Weasleys, the Dursleys and the Malfoys are all sort of near each other. And Lucius slips the diary into Ginny's bag at nine and three quarters. I know it changes something. I know I said we shouldn't change things, but I'm just thinking, what are they going to do to hook people and tease the second season? Anyway, that's how I turn this book into season one. I don't love it structurally it feels very unbalanced with far more happening in the second half of the season than in the first half. I think each episode should have a moment where at least one of the golden trio really shines and this episode structure doesn't really have that. But if they can have some witty writers who really bring to life some more like mundane moments, not not that really anything is mundane in a magic school, but I think the TV episodes could do a great job of building out those moments that aren't the huge plot points, right? Make the world feel like it lives and breathes outside of Harry's point of view that the story is told from. I also would like more scenes with inter-character moments away from the large plot points to focus on the development of the trio's relationship, like how Ron hates Hermione to begin with and how Hermione nags them constantly to do their homework and don't focus on Quidditch, focus on studying. Could set up more relationships with Neville and the Weasley twins and Seamus and Dean. Introduce characters like Crabbe and Goyle and Justin Finch Fletchley and Zachariah Smith. <laughs> like through the whole story across the seven seasons, all of these characters will have parts to play. And since the movie started before the final book released, they didn't really have the foresight to do that with certain characters. But in the show, they can. So I'd like to see them all appearing from the beginning, if possible. That's what I'd do anyway. If you want me to break down how I would structure the second season or the third season and so on, let me know in the comments. I can always make those videos. And if you want to see me rank how I think each book will lend itself to a season of a TV show, I break it all down in this video, which I think you might want to watch next.